Hello, I'm Wendy. Today we're painting some watercolour trees in snow. It's an easy tutorial using salt effects. I've no reference to show you today because this little scene is really mostly out of my imagination. I'm looking at a few paintings I did in the past and some photographs. Um, it is an easy tutorial and I do mean that, so um, we'll get straight into it. I wet the paper all over and then I put um, a sky wash on. I wanted this to be very light, so it's um, cobalt with just a touch of burnt umber and I left some white near the bottom as you can see and then while the paper was wet I did my wet into wet trees which you've seen me demonstrate before. You've got to keep the background in even wetness. Um, I didn't want it to be perfect, you can see I added a bit more water to soften edges and the colours I was using there was quite different for me. I was using burnt umber and this time I was using Payne's Grey. I've been looking at some palettes of some artists who use these mixers and I quite like them so I thought I'd do a bit of experimenting with these colours today. While the paint is still wet you can add some darker mix to the to the background trees as you can see there and that's got a little bit more Payne's Grey in it. And then I wanted to introduce a yellow, so a bit of raw sienna with um, a bit of burnt sienna is working quite nicely or yellow ochre. And then I softened again with clean water. I wanted to keep the, um, the foreground really light so um, I didn't put a lot of paint on there just a little bit as you can see. Now almost immediately I added some regular table salt. I put some at the top of the trees and I put some at the base of the trees. I didn't want to put a lot on the trees themselves because I thought it would wash it out and I just wanted a fairly subtle salt effect. I don't know if you call this subtle or not but um, I wondered if it was going to work but there's no way of telling till you actually start putting the trees on. You do, you do have to leave the salt to, um, to, make, to do its effect on soaking up the paint for quite a long time. In fact, I left it, I think I did the first washes in the morning and then I left it till the afternoon to let the salt work. Um, it works because you've got the wet paint and the salt soaks up the paint and sometimes you're left with um, a little bit of extra salt on the paper which you just brush off, that's not a problem. It is quite a tricky technique, you have to do a little bit of practicing, but on the other hand, don't be too worried about it. See what happens, and um, you'll never do the same effects twice. And I didn't really like this, to be quite honest, when I'd first done it, but persevere, put the trees on, and see what it looks like. The mixes I'm doing for the trees, again, is the burnt umber with a bit of Payne's Grey. And I varied the tones, as you can see, I wanted to try and get one of them looking a little bit more distant. And then you've got uh, this middle one that I'm painting now, and then the foreground one, more the point of interest there, the focal point, and that's going to be quite a lot darker. Quite a lot of rigor work here, I kept it very loose, it was a very loose painting, this quite a spontaneous painting. And you can see here that I'm uh, putting some darks on there while the first washes are still wet. I'm working on a Saunders Waterford 140 pound knot surface block and if you uh, remember the beginning of the video I had the whole block and I had one side covered because as usual I'm working on more, more than one thing at once but what I find is if you're doing this this very wet work if you start off on a small piece of paper then it does tend to cockle so I like to work um, on either a large piece of paper or on a block, which is a bit smaller sometimes, but on a block and if you're only going to use part of it then cover the other side of the block up. I find if I do use a small piece of paper that's going to be a final image of about 8x5, it does cockle very easily, so beware of that. Here I've taken the top piece of paper off the block and cut it in half, so I'm now working a lot drier and the paper is not going to cockle. I'm using the same two colours and um, with a rigger, just doing a few random strokes with um, a few branches and possibly a few leaves on them. I didn't want to overdo this, I wanted to keep it quite simple. I do tend to get very fussy with paintings. 
and in the foreground just the suggestion of a few grasses. I put a few um, fence posts in. I didn't want the fence to look too regular um, because I wanted it to look quite random and as if it was just a few broken down fence, if you like, just sort of peeking out from the snow. There could be some little bits of earth or something um, underneath the tree, just to add a little bit of interest, but again, not getting too fussy. Now for this painting, I did, as you probably noticed, um, which is unusual for me again, I didn't do any masking out. So to suggest the snow on the fence, I used some white gouache. Again, I didn't want to go over the top with this picture and make it um, too snowy and too much gouache on it. So um, I just used it very sparingly on the fence. And again, quite sparingly on the, um, the tree itself as well. And um, I put a little bit, as you'll see, on the background tree. I can find the gouache a little bit difficult to use sometimes. Um, it's quite difficult to get the right consistency, I think. Um, you can either water it down too much or it comes out a bit too blobby. In this case, I think in places I watered it down a little bit too much, so um, that's all right. As it dries, you can go back and add a little bit more to it, which is what I did. So as I was painting this picture, I felt it was, um, it really started to come together as paintings do once you've put the trees on. Um, sometimes the background can look a bit odd and a bit weird and I think sometimes happy accidents that look a bit odd can look really nice in the finished painting so don't worry about it. Um, and I found, as I said, I found it started to come together when the trees were on and as I was putting in some of the little details like the fence and the uh, and the gouache on there. I thought it looked quite nice in the end and I was quite pleased with the background. I felt the salt was working quite nicely in the sky giving you that sort of granulated effect and because I used it quite sparingly I got that nice little effect on the right hand side which looked like sort of bushes or something growing there. So I thought in the end it was um, it was worth showing you and doing the uh, doing a talk over and doing the little tutorial on it. I thought you might find it interesting and I hope you did. It's quite different from my last video which was painting birch trees for a Christmas card and that was a very very cold picture. The colours were very cold and I, I think I wanted a bit of an antidote so I did a very warm one this time with these uh, with these new browns that I've discovered which I think are working quite well. At this stage I took a photograph because I wasn't sure if this was this sprinkling effect and splattering effect with the toothbrush and gouache was going to work. Um, I felt it was a little bit too brown and a little bit too hard edged and sometimes I put a bit of water with the gouache like this, use a small toothbrush. Have a practice first if you want to try this out on something else and you can splatter with the toothbrush and you can get a very, very fine mist of the gouache, which will knock things back. It can be particularly useful for um, for the distance as well, but um, I just wanted to knock that brown of the tree back a little bit. Don't go overboard, because if you go overboard with it, you can obliterate your picture, which is not something that you want to do. Finally, I added just a few more spots of snow on the tree, and um, not too much because um, again you can get too fussy and go. I, I wanted this to be quite a subtle picture, a bit atmospheric if you like. So there came a time when I really did have to stop fiddling around and in the end I think I was quite pleased with this picture. And as always I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you picked up some tips that will help you in your own paintings. You can find very simple snow scenes with just a few trees and do a little bit of sketching maybe and make a little picture from them. In my next video I'll be working on something a little bit more complicated than this um, which I've been experimenting with, a snow scene using some sponge work and different techniques so if you don't want to miss that then do subscribe to my channel. You can also see some of the Christmas cards that I've done over the years and you might like to try one or two of those.
Bye for now and happy painting.